Good day, folks. Guess who? It's Mr. Reese again. Yes, I know. It's Mr. Reese's Art Club. This week, the theme is food. Um, and we've decided to combine it with pop art. Very popular is old pop art. Amongst children, they love it. It's bright, it's bold, it's loud. And I know you guys love it. Anyway, check the face paints out. Something you can think about yourself. Get yourself a pop art face. Right, I tell you what. If you haven't, if you haven't got, pop, if you haven't got face paints, you could even possibly use these super cheap tempera paints that I go on about. I've tried them; it doesn't react with my skin. But check with your mum and dad. Health and safety. Always remember that. Okay, so we're looking at pop art and we're looking at food. So first of all, I'm going to show you something my daughter's worked on. We've got drawing or painting or both. Okay, so she started off. You've been looking at pizzas. What's this here? What? Lettuce. And lettuce, and we've got chips. Uh, that's, and then you can see the use of dots and the use of stripes, okay? And a thing called Bende dots, very famous. Roy Lichtenstein used them a lot. Um, then she's uh, taken that from a beautiful dark outline, bright bold colours and stripes and dots, as you can see there, down into this one. This one's called Bass relief. Bass relief means it's not 3D and it's not 2D. So it's not flat and it's not in the round. And as you can see, this is a collection of recycled products that we've got from the recycling bin. We've got tomatoes, they're bottle caps. We've got lettuce, which is cardboard and string. We've got sweet corn, which is scrunched up tissue. We've got chips, which have been made of kitchen foil. The background's bubble wrap. Found some bubble wrap in the, in the recycling bin. And we've got pizza, we've got cardboard, we've got all crisp pack, packet for the cheese. OK, now, in terms of pop art history and what it's all about, we're looking at key guys are Roy Lichtenstein, the comic strip guy from America. Klaus Oldenburg, who is a sculptor who does giant food. We've got Andy Warhol, you remember his soup cans, we'll show you those in a minute. And we've got one of my favourite artists. Patrick Coalfield, you might not know him, but he's just an amazing painter. So we've got some information about pop art there, but you'll have it. You can always look back on that. Um, I would just like to get you to look over here at my little demonstration exhibition board right here. And as you can see at the top, we've got Klaus Oldenburg. He's got his burger, Oldenburg burger, get it? So, and then we've got his chips on a plate. I've done those giant size. Here we've got some, we've got some oh, very healthy food. This unlike this, we've got some very healthy food as well. So apples, we've got the bende dots, we've got the highlights. Notice the dark outline, very important and bright colours. Here's a sandwich, or oh, it looks like something out of Subway. And uh, look, at, oh, I don't know what that's made of. It looks like kind of like plastic, but it's a sandwich with a with a skewer stuck through it. Then we've got Klaus Oldenburg again here. What a sculptor. Look at that on the side of a building. It's a, a Cornetto stuck to the top of the building. We've got spaghetti with a fork. I think that's Jim Rosenkiss, but you'll have to double check it. Uh, a pizza there with a dark outline. Another Klaus Oldenburg. Look at the size of that. The scale of these things is what makes it so special. And if we look at another one of his here, we've got the very healthy apple, but it's giant size. And then we've got naughty things like chips coming out of a bag down there. And then for pud, what is that? What could that be? It's got ice cream in it. I don't know exactly what it is, but it looks absolutely delicious. But sink your teeth into that and you'd probably lose them because it'd be made of metal. And then we'll just pop this one in for Mr. Parker. Look at that beautiful wine glass, two colours, inspired by an artist called Patrick Caulfield. And guess what? Campbell Soup Cans. Silk screen printed, that's a photographic process. I used to be a silk screen printer in the 80s, that's another story. So that's pretty cool. That's photographic, that one, bit clever. And again, that is a beautiful painting by one of my favourite artists, Patrick Caulfield. Okay, so the next thing you could do, I've started it right here. I've started a painting, and the painting is actually a thing called a still life, and I haven't written it on there. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you what a still life is. Here's a still life. See if I can do this without dropping it. I literally threw it, I threw together a few objects, arranged them, really simple. Okay, there's my still life. And I sat here 
and I started to draw them and that's what I ended up with although I've only had about 20 minutes on it and I started with a simple line looking at the still life no shading keeping it really really simple once you've done that you can go over in a bold black outline again I would highly recommend a permanent marker then I've actually mixed up paint and I've been inspired actually by this painting again I'll just point it out Patrick Coalfield with the wine glasses simple quite somber colors there but offset by a yellow yellow background really really stunning so there you have it I can keep going and, and, and this I've used acrylic paints the dots which highlight uh, shadows and the stripes also help with shadows it's a technique it's just experimenting with pattern reminds me of last week last week with the animals do you remember we were doing the dots and we were looking at the aborigines it's got that quality obviously the aborigines came long before pop art so maybe they're ahead of the game so the next stage i wanted to say was if you wanted to go into a kind of 2d stroke 3d now with kate we did it with the recycled materials out of the recycling bin all the caps and the foils and the bubble wrap here we're going to use cardboard now if you look at this closely you've got a black line and you've got a dotted line the black line represents a cut the dotted line represents a score and if you come right here i can show you very briefly my safety scissors a score here it goes this is safety scissors a chip here it is that's what I've drawn on there and I've now put it onto my wafer thin bit of cardboard. I've drawn it out. I've got my score. There's my score line. We know that's a score line because it's a dotted line. OK, that's a score line. They're roughly the same thickness. You can do it with a ruler if you want to draw it out. And then it's got little extra flaps on the side like that. And then literally because you scored it, it collapses on itself. Look, and there you have a chip and then I've got the two bits on the end again work for my original diagram so what you could do I've got a bit of masking tape you could use a bit of sellotape or you know anything to hand okay I just happen to have masking tape so I can just stick a bit of tape on there like that oh uh, that's lovely making a little chip I once did this project with year eights about 20 years ago and the chips were the size of a giant table like the ones in the art room each chip was that big and we covered them in sand to give them texture we obviously painted them and uh, we ripped some of the cardboard bits off to give the rough finish like you know the corrugated cardboard underneath here that gives texture as well so there you go I stuck that down really good and then what you could do if you had a bit of mud rock you could mud rock it if you wanted to or you could simply paint it with uh, PVA glue that would set rock hard I would use acrylic paints on cardboard if you can get your hands on them okay the pizza here we go here's the pizza the diagrams on the wall again the solid lines are cut okay so you draw them out solid lines are cut the dotted lines are score I've then transferred that onto my bit of card so dotted line yeah score dotted line score now one of the tricky bits here it's the curved bit so you can see the curved bit the dotted lines are there so again these areas you would have a score and I've gone all the way around there so watch this it collapses on itself now notice I've got a couple of cut marks here so again you would have to make reference to the diagram and then the idea is that these this would come around like that and that falls on itself like that so here we go here's my masking tape put it on the back of your hand like that so you can still use your hands the only downside is when you pull it off you've got very soft skin on the top of your hand but hey who cares so here we go let's just see if i can just stick that down we're nearly there guys nearly there don't go to sleep just yet here here it is pop it on there like that okay fold that underneath there all you got to do is simply, if you can't remember this and, and you won't, is literally go back to my diagram, look at it, break it down. A solid line is a cut and a dotted line is a score. And there you go. So straight away, there's me a little, there's me a bit of pizza and there's my chip. 
okay now I mean you could you could put anything on there you could put beans or peas you could roll up bits of paper you could you could even actually I said use mud rubber you could paper mache those as well bright colors paint them up make it look like this guy's work Klaus Oldenburg look at those chips beautiful shiny disgusting colors but they taste lovely and they're bright and they attract you anything that's bright and bold and hard sell is classically pop art have a nice day goodbye